pros and cons of paying cash for your real estate investments. What are they? In this video, I'm gonna give you a very clear cut black and white list of the pros and the cons of paying cash over financing or leveraging your investment properties. Now, to help ease the message, I'm gonna do the list specific to rental properties. There would be some variations for things like flipping or other strategies, but just so I can keep everything kind of concise and more clear, I'm just gonna use rental properties as the example. So I'm gonna give you the pros and cons list, and then I'm also gonna give you some additional resources to help you further your knowledge base about all of this. If you're trying to decide to pay cash or financing, it'll help you with that debate. Now, before I give you the list, if you're thinking about paying cash for your investments or you're trying to figure out whether you should pay cash or finance, smash that like button. I guarantee you're in good company. Let's get right into this. I'm gonna start, good news first, I'm gonna start with the pros of paying cash for your real estate investments. In no particular order, here they are. Lower closing costs. You're gonna pay less in fees to get the property closed if you pay cash. If you finance, those fees are gonna be a lot higher and that's money out of your pocket. Ease and quickness of the buying process. Most people know sellers are usually gonna give priority to the people paying cash because it's an easier transaction. So you may get priority as a buyer, and then to close the property, it's a much simpler process. When you finance, it's going to feel like you have to donate your left arm and your firstborn child multiple times over to get that loan closed. It's just a headache, period. So when you pay cash, you get to avoid that entire headache of financing. Vacancy. If you have a rental property and it goes vacant, you're presumably not making any income on that property. If you have a mortgage, you're going to have a mortgage payment still looming over your head. The mortgage company does not take a break when you have a vacancy. So you still have to make that mortgage payment. If you have paid cash for your property, you don't have that extra weight looming. You don't have that pressure. You don't have to make that mortgage payment while there's no income to help you do that. It has to come out of your pocket. Mortgage interest. A lot of people want to pay cash because they don't want to spend all of that money on the interest of the mortgage. Fair. It's a lot of money. I am going to link to a video later that comes back to this because this one is a little bit up for debate. So we'll dive into that later. But for now, you get to save all of that interest on a mortgage if you pay cash. Credit score. When you pay cash, your credit score is really not at risk because nothing's attached to it. When you finance, there's two times that your credit score could be either slightly or majorly impacted. Initially, when you get a loan, there's usually a little dip in your credit. It's temporary. It usually bounces back, no problem, but some people don't like that. And then of course, if you end up in a foreclosure or a short sale situation, then your credit score really is dangling in the wind and may get blown away. Just the reality. My favorite, sleep. You may think I'm kidding, but I really value the quality of my sleep. And some people at the end of the day just can't stomach the idea of being in debt. They don't want loans. They don't want that looming mortgage payment. And they're just going to sleep better knowing they own the property free and clear, period. It's, a, it's kind of a big factor in my opinion. Now, these next two and last two pros of paying cash for a real estate investment, I'm gonna caveat. I'm gonna tell them to you from the perspective of them being pros, of them being benefits to paying cash. However, I am going to bust that perception of both of them and move them into the cons list. Sorry, it's just... That's just what's going to happen. Little plot twist for you. And to make it worse for the people who have had this in the pros category, these are arguably two of the biggest pros of paying cash. And again, I'm going to take them to the other side. But some perceived benefits of paying cash. Number one, you're going to make a higher cash flow every month. So if you don't have the mortgage payment to pay every month, obviously you're going to pocket more cash flow. Duh. Of course. And if you pay cash for your investment property, you're going to have more equity in it. So if you have a hundred thousand dollar rental property and you pay cash for it, you have a hundred thousand dollars in equity versus if you put 20,000 into it, you only have $20,000 equity. That's a big difference in equity. 
but hang on to your seat for that one. I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to take those two and move them to the cons list right now. And we're going to start there. So you got all the pros and now you're about to learn why a couple of those pros may not be so pro. Okay. Cons list for paying cash for your real estate investment property. The higher cash flow. I actually think that this is more accurately lower cash flow. Here's why. Yes, it is true. If you buy $100,000 rental property for cash, you will make a higher cash flow per month. Cool. Keep it in the pros column. Right on. However, let's say you have that $100,000 to put cash into the property. And instead of putting it all into one property, you put it into four properties. You put $25,000 down on each and you buy four properties. If you take the cash flow that you make on every property, which is the initial cash flow you would have made without the mortgage payment, and then subtract the mortgage payment. So there's your lower cash flow number, but then you times it by four. That times by four is actually higher than that one cash flow. So for one property, yes, it's true. You're going to make a higher cash flow if you pay cash. If you're buying multiple properties, it's going to be lower. That's a con, period. Your $100,000 did not get you as much in cash flow as it did if you split it between four properties. Do you agree with me? If you do, hit the like button. If you don't, throw it into the comments. Tell me all about it. And then this equity perception. If you have $100,000 equity, that's obviously higher than $25,000 equity. Yes. However, I actually think having more equity is a con because that equity is illiquid cash. You can't go to an ATM and pull it out. You can't write a check for it. It's hard to get out. So what does more equity actually get you? Other than maybe a little peace of mind? I don't know. It's not really usable money until you pull it out and it's hard to pull out. And when you pull it out, you're probably gonna pay interest on it. So I think the more equity pro is actually a con. I don't think it's helpful to have more equity. Instead of, let's call it $80,000 or $75,000, the difference between having 100,000 in equity and 25,000 in equity. 25,000 in equity leaves you $75,000 of cash. You could use that to buy more investment properties. You could do anything with that. Can't do it when it's all in your property. Okay, Whew, harped on that one. Again, like the cash flow. If you agree with me, hit the like button. If you don't, throw it in the comments. Why do you disagree with that? I personally just don't want that much equity in all my properties. Okay, Whew. getting a little heated there. Less diversification. All of your eggs are in one basket. If you buy $100,000 rental property versus four rental properties for $100,000 each, but you financed each of them, you have four chances for success. If one of those four properties, something happens, you have three more to carry you along. When you put it all into one property, you're putting all your bets on one property. That's one neighborhood, one property, one market. If anything happens to those things, what else you got? That's, that's the end of the line. With multiple properties, you have more room for safety because you have more diversification. I personally like diversification. Anyways, are you starting to kind of figure out where I am on the cash versus leveraging uh, debate? We'll talk about that later. And then lastly, we already talked about the cash flow for paying cash versus leveraging, but a pretty big con to paying cash, and this is just a reality, this is not with judgment, this is just a fact, is that your overall returns are likely going to be significantly less when you pay cash. Here's why. It's not just the cash flow. So we already decided you can make more cash flow from four properties than you can from one, even with the mortgage payment. But cash flow isn't the only way a rental property makes money. It makes money in five different ways. Cash flow, appreciation, tax benefits, equity build via mortgage paydown, and inflation. So 
in the case of having four properties versus one property, you're literally four Xing each of those profit centers. So we already talked about the cash flow, but let's look at appreciation. A hundred thousand dollar rental property you bought for cash, it appreciates to 150. Great. You now have fifty thousand dollars in free equity to you. Those, let's say you bought four of those properties of the same property, and they all appreciated from 100 to 150, and you finance those. The bank isn't the one keeping those $50,000 in each property. You are. You earned $50,000 in equity times four. That is four times the appreciation, four times the equity than you made with all your money in one property. Same with the tax benefits, 4X the tax benefits, 4X the equity pay down or equity build via mortgage pay down, 4X the inflation benefits. You're literally 4Xing your overall returns. So the con for paying cash is in most cases, it's just gonna offer you lower returns. Now, does that mean you shouldn't pay cash? No, absolutely not. Think of the sleep thing alone. I don't care how high the returns are, if you're leveraging, if it causes you to lose sleep or causes you headaches or stress or strain, not worth it. You can still make plenty of money paying cash. So there is no right answer to cash versus leveraging. But now you know the pros and the cons and my perception of the true cons, which is contrary to a lot of people think, to paying cash. So use that, take that all in, apply it to your situation, apply it to your strategy and see how it fits for you. Maybe it's the perfect fit. Maybe you're like, no, I got to leverage. I'll tell you, I'm a huge fan of leveraging. I do it as much as I can. So in terms of extra resources and to explain why I prefer leveraging, here's some things to check out. I'm going to link to some videos below. The first one is, before I get to why I like leveraging, let me go back real quick to that mortgage interest payment. The video I want you to check out is me talking to Aaron Chapman. He is a phenomenal investor-friendly lender. I highly recommend you check him out. Use him for your loan options. He's phenomenal. And in this conversation with him, he talks about the effect of inflation. And his argument is that if you get a 30-year fixed mortgage, that the rate of inflation will cause you to actually spend less over time, even with that interest payment, than if you put it all cash early on or you get a shorter term loan. I know, hold the phone. Go check that video out. It is phenomenal information that I feel like a lot of people don't have access to. Then back to why I like leveraging personally, I'm going to do two videos. One is called, should you finance your rental property for exactly this reason that we're talking about? The other one is the power of leveraging and real estate investing. Spoiler alert, it's not just money that you can leverage. There's all sorts of things you can leverage. So really understanding more about leveraging. Both of those videos support why I personally like leveraging. But again, I'm fully in support of the people who are going to lose sleep at night by leveraging, pay cash. I will feel better if you do that. I don't want you stressed. And then last resource I'm going to give you is my book called Not Your How-To Guide to Real Estate Investing, Life Lessons on Hacking Your Mind Before You Hack Your Wallet. In that book, I have an entire chapter on leveraging. And I actually take that example of the $100,000 property versus financing multiple $100,000 properties. And I actually spell out the math in more detail to show you more of what I was talking about in this video. Whew. So what's the verdict? What do you feel better doing? Do you prefer to pay cash? And if so, why? Or do you prefer financing? And if so, why? Throw all of that in the comments. Let's put it all on the table and talk about this debate between cash and financing. But hopefully from this video, you now have a more clear picture on the true pros and cons of paying cash for your real estate investments. And I will see you on my next video.